Are you thinking about buying new construction? If so, watch these five tips before you do. My name is Natasha Bazil with SoulByNet.com, associate broker with Virtual Properties Realty. I'm located in Georgia and I service the Gwinnett County and surrounding areas. Okay, let's get right into it. So tip number one, you wanna have an agent. You need to have your own representation. Please understand that the agent on site represents the builder. Should things go left or anything go down or anything like that, like they are representing the builder's interests. And yes, in new construction, things can happen too. So you want to have your own representation. And with that, it costs you nothing. With new construction, the builder is paying your agent's commission. So you're truly doing yourself a disservice if you do not have an agent. So when you go visiting new construction, they ask, do you have an agent? Say yes, and you're gonna put down my contact information. Well, I'm, I'm just kidding. Well, kind of kidding, kind of not, but, if you have an agent, go ahead, just let them know, yes, I have an agent, they're still gonna let you tour, they're still gonna give you information, but you wanna advise it up front. Um, even if you don't have an agent at the time, still say you do, then in the meantime, before you write the contract, you're gonna find an agent. If you are looking for an agent and you, you're not sure who to contact, I would say get a recommendation from a family and friend that had a good experience. Contact me regardless of where you are. Um, I can refer you to a qualified agent in your area, one that I know is gonna take care of you. And also one that's familiar with the new construction process. Tip number two, start early. I cannot stress this enough. There was a time, and I say that like it was so long ago, it really wasn't that long ago, where new construction was like always in your back pocket. Like you always knew you could go new construction and get your client into something pretty quickly because they always have like spec homes. Spec homes are homes that they've already started building. And basically, you know, it was closer to the finish line. So your client could pick one of those and get into home pretty quickly. Spec homes, I mean, are almost non-existent now. So don't count on spec home. Air on the side that you're gonna have to build and it's gonna take several months. So it can take four to six months plus, depending on weather um, and all of that. So start early, do not, see a community and think that okay they have you know they're still building i'm good no builders are putting contracts on lots even before they start building so not too long ago i went to a community and they had already started pre-selling they were almost sold out of this new community and they didn't even have one house up yet so yes do not wait start early tip number three get an inspection so like should you get an inspection there was a time where i would kind of like kind of, you know, just leave it up to my clients to say whether they wanted an inspection or not. And ultimately it still is their decision. But now I am more so on encouraging them to get an inspection. It's a man-made product and humans can always make a mistake. Yes, there are inspections that are done, you know, by the county, but it just depends on the county how detailed those inspections are and they're not looking at things. Um, as detailed as a home inspector would. So yes, even with new construction, inspectors are finding things. I've had them where the inspectors found like things that were extremely minor and they just brought it to the builder's attention. And I've also had it to where it was more serious, like um, mold in the attic. And I found out that that could happen when the lumber sits outside and it rains and it gets wet and then they put it up, up there in the house in this hot area. So. So for cases like that, it's great to have a home inspector. So please check out these videos here that I've done with an inspector and really consider it. I mean, you know, it's not an astronomical cost. You're talking about maybe four to $500 in most cases to get an inspection. And when it comes to new construction, you can have them come out if the home is being built, you know, before they put up the drywall so they can see, you know, behind the walls, they can come out after the drywall is up. So, so I do think it's a good thing to have a home inspection when you're buying new construction. Tip number four, if the lot is not graded, and what I mean by graded, when you go and see the lot, it still has up trees, the builder has not gone and cleared it out and prepared it to be built on. So if it's not graded, you want to ask specific questions. Questions like, is the yard going to be flat? Is there going to be a drop? Is there going to be an incline? 
those are things that in most cases you cannot determine by just looking at it when it's all you know it's full of trees and shrubs and bushes and things like that you can walk the property if you're daring because um some of these wooded areas i'm mm -mm, i know i don't know what i'm gonna run into snakes i have gone and seen snake skin you have on the right type of shoes and you're daring go ahead and walk the property but nevertheless still ask the builder because they have an idea um, they have a plat map that's going to show them the lots also from that map you want to get the dimensions the dimensions of your lot to so that you understand how big or how narrow the the backyard or how how narrow the front yard you just want to understand the dimensions of the lot you also want to go out there with the on-site agent and walk the lot so have them show you the pins of the property so you know where the lot lines are number five is consider upgrades depending on the builder you can spend up to thirty forty thousand dollars in upgrades on the other end you could go in with the mindset that i don't want to get any upgrades grades and you just want you know what comes standard which is cool but I want you to consider upgrades and why I say that is because the first home that I bought it came with an unfinished basement and I was always like I'll finish it later I'll finish it later granted 10 11 years later that basement was still not finished one um, in the bathroom we had uh, vinyl flooring I'll do that later. I'll do that later. Never got done. So, you know, if you have a handyman in your family, you are one, you're married to one, it's going to be easier for you to make upgrades. So I can see you saying, no, I'll do that after closing. But if you know you're really not handy or you don't get bonuses or large sums of money, just don't fall into your lap often, it may make more sense for you to finance in those upgrades. Upgrades that I recommend um, tile wherever there's water. So tile in the bathrooms. Um, you could do tile in the laundry. As long as it has like a, a drain pan under your washer, you should be okay. But definitely in the bathrooms. So I go in homes and I see a lot of water stains like on the ceiling and nine times out of 10, a bathroom is on top of that. So if you have tile, it's less likely for that damage to occur. So I definitely say tile in the bathrooms. A big one, when you have the option to do an upgrade from a knee wall, I'll put in a picture of what that is, an upgrade from a knee wall to spindles, go ahead and make that upgrade. That really gives your home a different look. It just looks more classy, posh. I don't I don't know the word, but when you just, can get the iron spindles over just a regular knee wall, go ahead and make that upgrade. Hardwood throughout the main level. A lot of people like hardwood or just consistent flooring like in new construction it's common to get like hardwood in your foyer hardwood and maybe like a section in your kitchen then it's common to have like luxury vinyl plank lvp in like the kitchen uh you might have it in like the mudroom area but they'll tell you specific areas where you get it standard then in the other areas you're going to have carpet carpet in your living room carpet in your dining room. I do not know why they put carpet in a dining room, but you know, that comes standard. So go ahead and upgrade those flooring choices so that it matches and it's cohesive throughout the first floor. Again, that's if you're not the handy type or if it makes more sense for you to finance that in. I did have a family that bought new construction, kept the standard flooring, and then after they closed, they changed it out. They, they got the flooring person's information from the builder and then they had the flooring upgraded after closing. So that's an option too. <laughs> A couple more common upgrades that you should consider is um, the backsplash in the kitchen, um, an executive master shower if they offer that option. I would highly suggest that because kitchens and bathrooms add value to homes. Next one is kitchens. So if you have the option to upgrade it to like a gourmet kitchen package, maybe the stove is a little more upgraded or, you know, features like that, I suggest that. Front porch is another one. You know, not all homes come with a front porch. So if that something that you know you really want you want to have that seating up front go ahead and make sure you add that in because that is definitely something that you cannot add in later or it's going to be pretty costly for you to add that in later the other thing covered patio you want to go ahead if that's something that you want add that in during the upgrade process two upgrades that i find people leave for after is having a fence added they normally don't add that in and have the builder do that and the other is finishing out a basement i would ask you know you could see how much it costs but i often hear that 
those two things a fence and finishing out the basement is cheaper for you to do after you close also with upgrades and it depends on the builder so you can ask this question if you don't want the appliance package that comes with it they may give you a credit for it and you can go ahead and pick your own appliances so that's something that you can consider it's also common as well for people to upgrade their appliances so just really consider and talk through the upgrades and just don't blow it off like yeah we'll get it done later you really want to consider does it just make more sense to go ahead and do it now? So those are my five tips for today's video. I hope you found them informative. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact me. Please go ahead and leave me a comment down below if you can think of any other tips or suggestions that you have for people buying new construction. If you're ready to start your search for new construction, reach out to me. Also visit my website, go to the buyers tab and you can start searching homes. If you have not done so already, please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to this channel. I appreciate you for watching. Have a positive, peaceful, and productive day. Bye.